Okay, it is my second morning in Stockholm on this summer trip and the weather outside, actually let me show you quickly. The weather outside is looking fabulous. The sun is out, not a trace of a cloud in the sky and the water is extremely calm so it doesn't look like there's much wind. So I'm going to make the most of these conditions and just do a whole lot of small things in, uh, in, the, in the town today. First thing I'm going to do is actually just go down and have breakfast because I haven't had breakfast yet and I'm really hungry. Um, and then after that we're going to head to a few spots that I've kind of pinpointed and written down as spots that I really want to go. The first spot is a lookout point that will allow us to look over the, the old town and the central part of Stockholm. So we'll get some nice footage there and I'll show you that and I'll even show you a really interesting place that I'm staying tonight. It's a hotel on the water. And then after that we'll probably take a walk down the Strandwegen, which is like uh, the road that goes along the the quays where all the boats are and along the nice buildings in, in Ustermalm and also take a look at that and then obviously the old town. So We've got a lot of exploring to do, a lot of cool stuff to, to see. I'm going to go have breakfast and then we'll head out. Cool. <laughs> So the viewpoint that I want to go check out is just up the hill there and uh, I've just stopped in a little park here called Maria Torget. Uh, we're on an island called Södermal and it's a district that I actually didn't get to explore that much last time I was here uh, but it's I'm really liking what I see at the moment. Um, Södermal, if you've been to London, can kind of be um, compared to Suffolk in, in, term, in the, the sense that it's uh, it was historically known as, as quite a, a slummy area. Um, it used to be the place where the, the working class people lived, um, but that apparently has changed. It's become a very important cultural area. Um, you know, a lot of art, a lot of uh, kind of bohemian culture, and I think because of that, um, the, the prices of, of the apartments here has gone up, and it's, it's become quite a nice place to live. So it's interesting to see uh, if you look back in history and then you look at it now how much everything has changed uh, but anyway let's move on let's go to the lookout point and let me show you where i'm going to be staying tonight and here we are just take a look at this view how insane is this so there's the town hall over there in the middle here's the island of gamlastan there is the bridge that goes from Gamlastan to Södermalm. There is the T-Bana train going across to Gamlastan. And that is where I'm going to be staying tonight. Pretty cool, on the boat. While we're up here, let's take a moment to talk about summer versus winter in Sweden. Because they are very, very different. Unlike South Africa, which kind of just has two seasons hot and cold <laughs> um, Stockholm kind of goes through everything because it's so far north compared to South Africa which is you know just quite close to the equator Sweden is far from the equator so you get very uh, bipolar <laughs> seasons uh, very hot very cold uh, very dead very alive and that's the same with the city life I came here in the winter a while back and it was quite a sleepy town you know, you go on the public transport, uh, you've got plenty of space in the public transport because people aren't really moving around. You go to the city center, it's fairly empty. You know, there was a point uh, last time I was here where I was walking through Gamla Stan, which is supposed to be the main attraction of Stockholm, and I was the only person on the streets, which is crazy. But now in the summer, it's the complete opposite. You go out there, it's absolutely packed with people, and it's just a totally different story. Now obviously the summer weather is a bit better, it's great, um, but for those of you who like to be on your own and like to take things easy and, and take it slow, you may want to consider coming out of peak season because in the middle of summer it can get pretty hectic. I mean, um, I, I, would, 
I know this sounds crazy, but I probably enjoyed Stockholm even more in the winter. Aside from the boat tours, if you want to do lots of boat tours, come in the summer. But there are a lot of things that you appreciate more in the winter because it's not packed with tourists. You can come in the winter, you can kind of take your time, walk through the streets slowly. Um, you know, you don't have as much daylight, but if you do make the most of your day, you can still get plenty of time in to explore everything. So it's a tough one. Uh, it depends on what kind of person you are, but uh, I wouldn't say that I enjoyed the summer time here any more than the winter time. But just down there, the old town is waiting for me, so the next thing I'm going to do is just to head down there and uh, just spend a few hours walking around like I did last time in the winter, but uh, kind of trying to capture the, the differences between summer in Stockholm and winter in Stockholm, so you guys can kind of get a, a feeling of, of what those differences are and see for yourself. Okay, let's go do that. Ugh, it's not fun to sit on cobblestones for a long time. Ugh. I wasn't joking when I said that Stockholm was busy in the summer. These narrow streets in Gamlestan are packed with people just trying to enjoy the short Scandinavian summer. And at first it may not look too hectic, but if you compare it to the footage I filmed here in the winter, you can see the contrast. This is uh, Stortorget, probably the most popular and most well-known spot in the whole city. Um, all the tourists know this spot and everyone knows those two buildings over there. In the winter this place is pretty dead, but in the summer, full of life. So it's really good to see on a beautiful sunny day like this, uh, that this place is uh, in its prime. Very cool. Again, let's do a comparison. Here's the square in the summer and the square in the winter. I'm sure you've all heard of the Nobel Prizes. Well, Alfred Nobel was Swedish. And here is the Nobel Museum. And you may not have known this, but Alfred Nobel was also the inventor of dynamite. Very cool. I really enjoyed just exploring these streets with no agenda and immersing myself in the culture and just taking it all in. But if you do head to the palace at midday, you can watch the changing of the guard, which is pretty cool. This is one of my personal favorite spots in the whole of the old town, well, in the whole of Stockholm. Um, it's a little spot where three roads meet. And when I came here in the winter, it was quite empty most of the time and this big beautiful green tree you see above me here was very dry and dead looking but now it's got these leaves on it when the sun shines down it goes a beautiful green color um, and a lot of people like to sit in the shade here at this quaint little restaurant on the corner and have a cup of coffee definitely definitely a place to check out if you come here that's enough gamla stan for one day time to head back to the hotel and check out and with that, we bid farewell to room 235 and we head on to the next hotel. Remember I showed you my beautiful floating hotel from up on the hill? Well, there it is behind me over there. That's where I'm going to be staying tonight. It's pretty awesome. And you know, one of the best things about that is that we've got the island of Gamla Stan right behind me here and a beautiful view of Södermalm across the, the, the lake over here, right over there. So it's a really, really good location. And I don't, honestly don't even know why I didn't stay in this boat for the previous few nights. I suppose I just felt like a bit of variety, but I think this is going to be really cool. So let's go in there and check it out. Oh man, I wish I had a 
wider angle lens so I could show you this place a bit better. Um, it is awesome. Not a big hotel room, not a smart hotel room, but there's something just uh, really kind of beautiful and nostalgic about having uh, a room inside a, a really old boat, inside an old cabin. Just walking into this hotel, I really you know, fell in love with it immediately. I'll show you around a bit later, but just take a look at this hotel room. <coughs> So, as I said, not big at all. You come through here, you've got double uh, bunk beds over there, a little desk area, a little cupboard, a heater. But look at the view out the window. This is awesome. That's Lake Melaran over there. That's the, the viewpoint we were up on early in the day, at the top of the hill there. And, I mean, what a beautiful day. Look at the lake. Look at the scar, it's fantastic. So I'm really looking forward to what the rest of the day might offer us. After I'd settled into the hotel, I headed to the city centre with the aim of taking a walk along Strandwegen. But I ended up at Kungstragården and discovered that there was some kind of folk music festival on. So that's where I spent the rest of my evening. And as a wonderful day comes to an end, I'm really grateful to have spent it in such a beautiful city on such a beautiful day, with such beautiful weather. Um, and I'm going to end it off by staying in a beautiful boat. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll definitely be doing more of this kind of thing in the future. But tomorrow I head back to South Africa uh, to get back, back to work with the hunting stuff. Um, but I'm sure you'll see me again soon on this channel in the very near future. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.